Welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast with your host, James Woodham, giving you the best tips on achieving the perfect renovation whilst making it as fun, safe, and as cost-effective as possible by hearing from experts in the industry and people that have been through the experience themselves. Let me introduce your host, three times award winner of leading renovation website, House, and over 15 years in the industry, renovating just over 200 properties, James Woodham. Hello guys, welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast, and um, welcome to the 17th episode um, of, the, um, of the podcast. Um, wanted to thank you very much for coming in and uh, joining me on this one. This is a live uh, property renovation podcast episode on Facebook. Um, so this is a live audio and video uh, podcast. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to put this one together because um, not everyone, um, not every homeowner considers how important a uh, schedule is for a project. Um, sometimes you would get the builder to develop a schedule or you could do it yourself, um, just uh, creating something on Excel or something like that. But the reason why you should have a schedule is just so that it's clear on both parties where, you, where your expectations are, where you're going to be, be uh, within the project week after week, and when you can relate back to the building company to to pick up on why things have been um, uh, either over scheduled or uh, whether they're late or whether they've been completed early, so it's just a good way to measure the project from the beginning to the end. And um, I've got a few things that I think you should include within any schedule that you do um, for any renovation, uh, and this is just to make sure that you've got the bare necessities clear. Um, so that you and and you've considered all of these points to make sure that um, the project can run quite smoothly and you've not really forgotten any anything or, or the most important bits. So um, I'm just going to bullet point them and then I'm just going to go and speak about each one. So the bits that you need to consider in uh, providing uh, to, to, to developing any schedule um, is first of all the planning. And then you need to consider the moving of any furniture and valuables, the start date, uh, the, pro uh, the protection of um, your property, then the removal um, of all of the existing bits and pieces within the bathroom, kitchen, etc. Um, the disposal, deliveries of any products and materials, uh, the examination period, which I'll speak about in a bit, uh, the first fix. Uh, which is everything that needs to be done before the second fix, obviously. Um, then you've got the substrates, uh, second fix, snagging stage. So um, everything that's done just at, just before the end of the project. Um, then the cleaning stage. Um, so I'll go and speak about each one um, and why it's important to have these included. So the planning. Now, Bef way before doing and starting any of the projects, you you have a planning stage. Now, this could be because you need to plan about what kitchen you want, what bathroom you want. You're going to go around to the particular um, shops that offer them. Um, you need to give enough time leads and consider. You may be ordering products that are overseas um, and take three or four weeks to arrive. So you need to consider that. Uh, you also need to an anticipate uh, some time because products that do arrive, they could be the wrong ones and it might not be your fault. It might be the company's fault. So you need to allow a few days either here, uh, either here or there to um, compensate for the returns and the delivery of the correct item. Um, if you're ordering the right amount of tiles. Now, um, if, you're, if you're ordering tiles, you always need to make sure that you order a little bit more just to allow for cuts, etc., um, and the same with any wood flooring that you've got as well, um, or, or or any wallpaper. You need to go at least ten or fifteen percent over what you actually need, so that you don't find yourself in a position where you've run out of materials, and then the building company is looking at you uh, to say, "Look, I gave you a quotation to do this project. Now it's delayed, and I need to come back because you didn't order enough." So always make sure that you order above what you need. 
that so that you don't put yourself into that position and then it can run a lot more smoother. Um, you also need to consider about moving of furniture and valuables. Now, you need to consider if you've, you've got storage options where you can take all of your furniture out, you can put them in temporary storage. Um, every building company, you ask any building company, they prefer to work in a clear area so that they've got no obstacles to go over and the job can be done a lot quicker, smoother, less risk of any damage, um, and you're on your way. Um, you need to consider the time that it's going to take to pack away all the furniture, to take it down the stairs, uh, to put it in the vans and to take it to storage. Um, so always put that within the schedule. With any start date, um, make sure that you allow enough time to go through everything with the builder. So you need to go through instructions, not just them arriving on site, you saying, I want this done and then leaving to go to work. You need to think about um, making sure you give clear instructions and spending the time to go through to make sure they fully understand. So this this would be allowing a good couple of hours in the morning. If it's a full renovation of your property, a good few hours in the morning uh, on the first day just to make sure everything is clear and they've got everything they need. Pictures as well. Giving them pictures, examples of what you need um, the, the, the finished article to look like so that you don't find yourself coming home and thinking, I never said I wanted that. So, um, because what, what will that will do is it will extend the schedule because it would have to be, uh, to be done again. So you've got repetitive work. Um, checking all the products with the builder. Now, if you've, if you've got any products that are on site, um, the very first day that they arrive, the site manager or the head of the building company needs to go through all of the products with you and they need to physically confirm to you that, you, they are happy uh, with the products and that there's no issue with them and that they, they will work. Um, and this is anything. This could be a shower valve or it could be a basin or a tap or something like that. You don't want to see find yourself in a position where they open up the box on the very day they need it and find that it's not the right one or it won't fit. So you always get that confirmed right at the beginning. Um, the best contact details, give them... Give the building company your best contact details so that you don't find yourself in a position where they're trying to contact you. You are, um, you know, you've got your phone on silent and uh, you, you've missed the call. They're not being, they're not able to move any further forward in the project until they get a certain approval from you about something. So you don't want to um, waste any time with that. Make sure that they've got the right email to contact you um, and the right phone number to contact you as well. Um, Give the builder some leverage. Um, this is another thing that delays projects as well. If you um, are not going to be around and they and you you still need the work to continue, speak to the building company or the head of the building company and say, "Listen, I give you authorization to go ahead with any other extra works as long as they cost under a hundred pounds or something like that." Um, you don't want to find yourself in a position where you're waiting for the decision. Uh, over a 24 hour period for something that's going to cost you an extra 50 pounds because that is going to delay the project by another day where things could have been done. Um, talking about the pro protection of your property, the way to speed things up um, before they arrive, do some protection yourself. Apply some dust sheets everywhere or some, um, um, so some hard plastic sheeting, which is called Cortex. You can, you can get this yourself if you wanted to and protect all the areas where you think is risk of damage. But if you're asking the building company to do it, they're going to come in, they're going to spend the first day applying all that protection and you, you just need to weigh up how urgent um, is the project needed to be completed. Maybe you could take care of that bit for them. Um, they're always going to probably say that it needs to, be, it needs to have a bit of extra protection because they want it done their way but at least you can speed up that process and save a day. Um, talking about the removal process of everything in your property. So this is dismantling things. This is removing um, removing all of the kitchen, removing all the bathroom, etc. cetera. Um, this is a very quick process. The very first few days, it's going to look like... Um, you're going to be a very, in a good, happy position because you're glad to be getting rid of the old stuff. And it's quite quick. The process is quite quick. So 
your interpretation of the building company might be like, um, oh, they're very professional, they're doing a very good job, they're working very hard. But essentially, removing stuff is quite quick. Um, it's, it's installing that slows the whole project down. So you need to be thinking about um, how best to get that done and uh, work with your building company, advise the building companies what you intend to keep. So you don't want to find yourself in a position where they've removed something and disposed of it when uh, you wanted to keep that. So maybe write down a list of um, items in your property that you do intend to keep. You might want to remove the kitchen, but keep the appliances. So just mark um, the appliances or put a post-it note on there just to make sure that they keep those items. Um, it can delay your schedule. If you're going to find yourself in a position where they've got rid of the new items, then you've got to either trace it back or you've got to buy a new one. So then you've got to consider the time it takes to choose a product um, and get it delivered. So just make sure you, you, you speak to your building company about that. Um, then you've got the disposal. So um, disposing everything at the beginning that's been ripped out, what, how long is that going to take? You know, you need to consider the amount that they're bagging everything up. They're taking it down. If you've got two or three floor uh, flights of stairs, they've got to take it all the way down there. Are they going to take it? Are you instructing them to take it out the back of the house? Um, and then when the remove uh, when the disposal company arrives, they've got to move it all all the way from the back of the house to the front of the house. Um, these kinds of things are going to delay your project and de delay time when work actual work could be done. So just consider that as well. Um, what about what else have I got here? Um, do they need a license for a skip um, or a permit? Um, and you need to schedule that in as well because the time it takes to go to the council and get that um, license or permit that you need for the skip as well. Um, how many skips are you gonna need? Um, do you need to be there to provide them with access? Because nine times out of 10, they might uh, schedule the um, disposal company to come after they've finished work or before or on the weekend. Um, so you do, you, you do need to speak to your building company to make sure that they've got access if they need. Um, then there's a deliveries as well. Now, delivery of products. This can take some time. The time slots are very wide. Uh, some companies say that they will be on a, uh, be with you on a particular day between nine and five. You don't really want to wait in for eight hours. So um, try to reduce that time slot down to two hours. Uh, then you'll find that that will benefit you a bit more. Um, You've got most delivery companies that will not deliver it into the house. So you always have to have someone there that can take the pro uh, the products into the house. They only deliver curbside. So always when you're purchasing these products, confirm with that company um, what their delivery policy is, just so that you can uh, put this in within your schedule. Ideally, you don't wanna be waiting in several times throughout the project. Try to get everything and speak with your building company to allocate one day, one or two days, when they would like everything delivered. And then everything can go into a separate room where work is not being taken place. Um, and then they've got everything on site so they don't have to um, run around or wait for any other deliveries. Um, so plan your, plan your deliveries uh, wisely. Um, also with the, the deliveries as well, speak to your building company. And f if, they, if they don't want everything delivered within one or two days, try to get them to agree um, a certain few days throughout the project. You don't want the bathroom stuff arriving two weeks before they need it. Because the longer it's on site, um, the more likely it has a risk of being damaged. So you want to have it delivered two or three days before it's actually needed. Um, then you should really have an examination period as well. So this could be um, when you've taken everything out and before everything goes back in. So this gives you the chance to have a look with your building company and go, right, okay, so this is actually what we've got to work with. And um, is this okay to proceed? Do we need to consider anything else? Will the uh, proposed plan of my ideas, uh, is that going to work? Um, 
or do we need to change any pipe work? You might find that some, you know, if you've removed all of the floor, you've got some damaged joists uh, within the floor, something like that. Um, so that's going to take extra time to correct. Um, maybe you've knocked down a wall and find, um, and fa well, maybe you've taken the, the tiles off of the wall and then you found that there's another three rows of tiles um, behind there. Um, you know, that's going to take more time to, to take off as well. So you want to consider that and, and, and put that within your schedule. Um, okay, so then we've got the first fix. So first fix is a term that's used by building companies and it basically relates to any of the pipe work and electrical work um, that needs to be rerouted uh, and fixed into place before the next stages um, happen. So in theory, you want to get this right once. You don't want to be doing any repetitive work. So this is when you need to be on site and you need to agree the exact positions of everything. So allocate again a couple of hours speaking, uh, a couple of hours where um, you're on site and you can speak to the building company and you can you can mark everywhere and all of the positions that things need to be. Any configurations that um, are usually dependent on the requirements that. Uh, the products um, have as well. So if you open up um, any of the products, you've got, uh, I'm going to relate to a shower valve because it's a lot easier, but if you go uh, and open up uh, the product of a shower valve in there, you're going to have the shower valve and all of the, comp all, all of the bits and pieces like the manifold behind and stuff like that, where all the pipes connect into. If you go online and, to, and you go to that product, they should have a technical diagram where it will show you the dimensions of the pipework that needs to go in there um, and what the fittings need to be. Now, if you just think, if you have all of that beforehand, if you download any technical diagrams and you send them over to your building company, then that's going to speed up a lot of things. You won't find yourself in a position where the building company arrives, looks at the product, opens it up, and then realizes that they don't actually have what it's needed to fit, and then go out, spend an hour in traffic, going to collect the right piece to bring it to come back. That's a lost hour. That could be done, uh, you know, a lot of work can be done um, on site with that. Um, so jot down everything that's needed when you, when you open up all the products, um, uh, sorry, jot, jot down all of all of the locations of where things are going to go, and make sure you download all the, all the technical draw, the diagrams if possible. Um, now let's talk about the substrates. Um, you should allow two days per room to apply any new substrates, and by substrates I mean the surfaces of the wall, of the ceiling, of the floor before the finished product goes on. So this usually refers to timber. Um, some ply sheeting for the floor, or some, uh, some some waterproof boards for the bathroom for the for the walls. Um, it could even improve. Uh, uh, it could even include uh, a tanking process where you apply some rubber liquid on the walls in your bathroom. That takes twenty four hours to dry. Um, so you need to consider all of this time within your schedule just to make sure that uh, there's no surprises. Um, with older properties, you're always going to have to replace some of the substrates um, and even some of the the um, the fixings of that hold that wall up. So some of the um, stud work or some of the joists in the floor, you need to um, anticipate that that you're going to need that. If you don't, it's a bonus and you've reduced the schedule. But always anticipate a day or two uh, for some delays uh, when you're doing that kind of thing. Um, Talking about uh, decorating, tiling, wallpapering, painting, etc. you know, the general decorating stuff, um, you need to allow for some time to have a clean down. So um, part of the first part of the project could have created a load of dust from all of the removal. Um, it, it could have created um, uh, some dirt where things have been, things have been put um, or some sawdust from, from timber that's being cut. So have a good clean up first before you start doing all of the decorating, um, just to minimize any repetitive work again, um, because you don't want to rip the wallpaper or scratch the tiles or crack the tiles because they've been sitting on the floor and something's underneath them. Um, you don't want to get any dust in the paint. 
So always, you know, give give a clean down of everything. And maybe you could do that over the weekend. So um, just before the week where they come in and do the decorating, you could give the whole place a once over um, and um, then then it's ready to start with all the decorating process. And it's for health and safety reasons as well. You don't want any dust uh, lying about in the place. You don't want any sawdust where people can trip over easily or slip over easily. Um, so clear everything out the way. Um, specifically tiling. Tiling is a tedious job. Now, it takes a long time, especially if you're doing mosaic tiles or something like that. And, and it's very misleading because um, uh, any, any homeowner don't really know the difference between uh, the time it takes to um install a large tile versus um so- something that's mosaic or something that is made of stone versus something that's made of porcelain so there's a lot of um processes and one takes longer than the other so certainly mosaic tiles take longer because there's a lot more uh care of attention that needs to be applied um but you'll you you'll realize the cost because usually tilers charge per square meter so the more square the more they charge per square meter, square meter is measured by the amount of time it takes to do the job um, so usually um, a good tiler can achieve 10 to 15 square meters in a day uh, in general um, but there are things like the adhesive uh, and the sealing of any tiles that you that, that take time, and this needs to be considered in your pro in in your project schedule as well. So um, certain uh, glue for for tiles can take twelve hours; it could take three hours. Um, or uh, if you're sealing any tiles so that don't, they don't get stained, um, then that can take twelve hours to dry, and you can't really do anything. They just they just have to dry. So you need to consider these things. Ask the right questions when you're when you're looking at your tiles. If it's something if if it's a project that needs to be done very very quickly, then um, don't choose um, don't choose natural stone mosaic. That's probably one of the worst um, because uh, natural stone is porous, so they need to be sealed, and it will take double the, the length of time it would take to to install a large tile. Um, then you've got the second fix. So this is all the beautiful bits, all the bits that you've been looking forward to see. This is the bits. These are the bits that are going to be installed. All those components that you've been spending a lot of money on. Um, finally, you get to see them being installed. Um, and and uh, they're supposed to look nice and function really well. So, look, you know, you want to make sure that all the areas receive a second that, that uh, are ready to receive a second fix. So by that, I mean double checking that you're happy with the position of everything, making sure that um, nothing needs to be adjusted uh, before before they're installed. And then having a good look around, making sure they're all right in the right position. Ideally, you want to uh, be installing these things once. No repetitive work. If you need to be installing something that's beautiful, you don't want to be taking it back off again because there's a risk of damage. Um, it might not be able to come off. Um, so, you know, try, try to aim to just only install it once and that's it. Um, schedule an hour again with your builder, go around doing all the checks as mentioned before, making sure that you confirm that you're happy with all the positions of everything and nothing needs to be adjusted. And that will save you a lot of time. Then at the end of the project, you should what you have what you call a snagging stage. So, um, if I was you, I would probably say, don't go around during the, the project too much speaking to your building company and saying, I'm not happy with this. This needs to be improved. That needs to be improved. That needs to be improved. because it's just going to slow down the whole job. It's going to knock their confidence. Um, don't be watching over their shoulder too much because that's going to slow them down as well. If you can try to minimize and, and note down everything you're not happy with, if it can wait, do it at the end of the project. This is the best thing. This is what a snagging stage is. It's at the end of a project when you go around with your building company before you pay the last stage of money to them and you go through um, pointing out everything you're not happy with that needs to be adjusted or moved or improved. Um, and then you've got one solid list to, to, to work towards. And then you can speak to them and say, how long is it going to take you to do that? I need it done within a week, two weeks, whatever. Um, so, uh, 
yeah, so it, 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 it's just about that. It's just about creating um, a full report at the end of the works. Um, where else am I? Ah, finally, finally, finally. Um, then you want to give the whole place another clean up. This is right at the end where you spend a good, um, get, get a professional set of cleaners in. They usually take around five to six hours to clean a standard house, uh, but they do an amazing job. So get them in and they can do a professional clean of everything. And then you can take some amazing photos, send them to your family and show, um, uh, you know, show them all of the successful renovation that you've had. Um, just to summarize, ultimately, you know, a schedule needs to be clear. It needs to be flexible and it needs to be shared. So share it with your building team, share it with anyone else that has access to the house, whether that's your wife, your husband, your kids, um, so that everyone knows what's going on and uh, who needs to be where they need to be um, and what particular stage the project is getting on, etc. And if you can share that on a cloud basis, most of the phones these days, they have like ways that you can set up a calendar and you can share that with people. Um, share it with your building company, share it with your family, because it's going to be a lot easier to manage. Less, uh, you know, the key to any project um, finishing on time is communication. So just making sure that everyone is clear, everyone's on the same page, singing from the same hymn sheet, and then you shouldn't have any problems. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, I'm sorry if I've been a little bit quiet. I went away for a little break, but I'm back now and I'm focused on um, providing you with more information, more helpful advice. And I've got a few exciting people that I'm interviewing as well for the next episodes. Just to finish, if you're not in the Facebook group, then please come and join the group. I put out a few videos every now and again that's exclusive to the group. So you can sign up by going to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the property renovation podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.